Hello, how are you doing today? Certified Master Chef Edward Leonard, Corporate Executive Chef for the Cordon Bleu Cooking Schools. Today I have the pleasure of sharing with you three of my favorite summer recipes. And these are recipes that are going to be great in flavor, simplicity, yet elegant, and at the same time, we're going to do a real good twist on a potato salad that's going to surprise you. Now the great thing about these recipes, you can do them at home, you can try them anywhere, everything we have here is so readily available. We're going to start off with kind of like a finger food and a mousse bouche and we're going to start off with some beautiful strawberries. What a great time of year when summer you have these gorgeous red, extremely flavorful strawberries. And the key when you're looking for strawberries, a little chef's tip is make sure there's no bruises or blemishes on the strawberry. You want a beautiful bright red color, you want it free from any blemish, any off color, and then you just take a great smell. If you can smell that strawberry and just those flavors that penetrate through you, you know you have something very special. So what we have today is we're going to team up an unusual combination that works extremely well. We have an avocado mousse. Basically what we've done is taken a beautiful avocado, a little touch of sugar, olive oil, and we mashed it up and pureed it and we have it in a little pastry bag. We then take our strawberry and what you're going to do is you bring up the stems of the strawberry and you just slightly do a twist and that'll pull off the stems and leave you a nice clean strawberry. Now, a lot of people get into a habit of cutting and slicing, but you waste all that beautiful outside of the strawberry and the meat of the fruit. So what we're going to do is take a Parisian scoop, okay, and this is something that we just take and we go into the strawberry and we just do a nice beautiful scoop here and hollow it out. And then we're going to do one more because we really want to get that mousse in there to penetrate that strawberry and fill it up. So you see here, just an beautiful clean look. We hollowed out the strawberry. We haven't broken through the fruit so everything just looks so hearty and that's when you can really smell that flavor starting to come across. So I'm going to take my pastry bag and we're just going to cut off a little corner of it and then we take that and we just put it into the fruit and beautifully just fill up the strawberry. Look at that beautiful green just a beautiful, sweet, creamy, the fatness of the avocado is going to be teamed up with the sweetness of the strawberry. So just something really incredibly special. And these are so easy to make. You can make them in advance. You can actually hollow out the fruit, have all the fruit prepared. You can have your avocado mousse in your pastry bag. So this is something that you want to get ready about 30 minutes before your guests arrive or before you're ready to dine. And you just fill them up right to order. And there you go. So very simple, very simplistic, and yet when you bite into this, the burst of that fruit, the sweetness of the strawberry, the butteriness of the avocado is going to come alive. Now, the important thing about food, too, is teaming up not only great flavor, but texture. The key to good food is having that texture and having that contrast. So one of the contrasts that we have is actually brioche. Brioche is a very buttery bread, so we've taken this with a cutter and we've cut some little croutons, we've sauteed them in some butter, and that's going to be the base for our strawberry. So we just put that on the plate, and you see here we take the strawberry filled with the mousse, we put it right on top of that brioche. Now you may be wondering what happened to the center of that strawberry. You know, we hollowed it out with the Parisian scoop that we talked about, and that's food that's not going to go to waste. It's very important that one of the key things when you learn about culinary education and cuisine is really to focus of respect for the product and utilization of it. Everything has a purpose and everything really, it's so important that you utilize food rather than throw it into a garbage can. So you see here we have all the hollowed out, all the Parisian scoops from the strawberry. We marinated it with just a little um, orange juice, a little touch of olive oil, black pepper. So here we have that little spice to also offset some of that sweetness. And we're going to take those and very, very simply take a toothpick and we're going to, and look at the beautiful color, you know, you hollowed it out, you got that red, white, so you got that nice summer color, that good flavor, and it goes right on top there and you just nicely push through and there you go. So we have this incredible strawberry, we have the contrast of the buttery brioche, okay, so you got that nice texture, you got that nice crunchiness, you got the filling of the mousse, you got the sweetness of that strawberry, and not one thing has gone to waste. We utilize 100% of the fruit, and this is just a great starter. You can make a bunch of these, you can put them on a little tray, a little platter, pass them around. If you do family style, keep them on the counter, or if you're doing a plated dinner and you want to start off with something that's light and refreshing to really get the meal going and get your guests really talking about what's coming forward, this is a great um, appetizer or what we call the muse in the industry. And the reason why a lot of this is done is really to create and set an expectation. It's, 
it's going above and beyond. And a lot of people at home, too, you know, when you cook at home, restaurants, there's really no great secrets. You know, it's about food. It's about the way we serve. It's about getting to, to your guests. You know, when I've always looked at a restaurant and wherever I work, people were coming into my home. People were coming in to the kitchen, to the dining room that was coming home. And I wanted them to have that great experience. So when you cook at home, it's the same thing. To do something this simple and so delicious, and your guests come and they arrive and everybody sits down, they have this in front of them. As they eat it, they're gonna talk about it. Oh my God, what is this? And wow, it's, it creates great dinner conversation. And then it also creates that expectation of what's to come and has your guests looking forward. I see we do have a question coming in. And the question we have is why is restaurant experience important? Well, a few reasons. Restaurant experience is just a, it's a great time to really give you that real life feel. You know, the Cordon Bleu, we have these great restaurants that the, uh, the students go through. And basically what it does is it creates a sense of urgency because it's one thing nice for me to show you this demo and how to do that strawberry and you take your time and do it. But when you're in that restaurant and you have guests coming in and they want to be served at a certain time or they only have an hour for lunch, so that sense of urgency to prepare great food, to still do it correctly, to still follow all the procedures and yet do it at a different pace is really what a restaurant experience builds. And I also think the atmosphere. I just love the sound of the pots and pans and the chef yelling out the orders and the wait staff coming true. It's just really an exciting atmosphere that I just think gets you really pumped up, gets you so excited. So if you have a passion for food and you really have a passion for cooking, man, the restaurant thing is just like turning on that switch inside you. It really gets you going. It gets you so hyped up, man, you're just in hyper gear. So for me, it's just an invaluable experience not only for education, not only to learn, but to keep your passion alive. Now the next dish we're going to make is really special. It's going to be watermelon. Um, and there's lots of ways to look at watermelon. You know, watermelon is, of course, a beautiful fruit. You have yellow watermelon. We have red watermelon. And, but we're going to take and do something very special and different to it. And it's something that you can do not only in the professional kitchen, but you can still do at home. We're going to do what I call pressing or vacuum sealing the melon. And basically what this is, is, is putting the fruit inside a bag. It's a special bag. And what we do, you know, if you come to Le Cordon Bleu, of course, you know, in our professional kitchen settings, we have those professional machines. But I want you to also be able to incorporate this at home. So we have what's called a food saver. And the food saver really works off the same premise as the same machines that we would have at the school that you get to use, where it takes a bag and you put it in there, and what happens is the oxygen in the air gets sucked out and it compresses. And what that does is it actually, for me, when I look at fruit and different proteins, by taking that ear out and compressing, you're really incorporating flavor, you're really um, bringing out the sugars, in this case of the watermelon, Compressing it really marinates a lot quicker. So there's a lot of great advantages to doing this. And not to say, too, that, again, when you have a dinner party and host it at your house or in a restaurant, you want as much prep as possible to enjoy the experience. Uh, we have another question coming in, again, in the restaurant mode. Uh, would you suggest a small restaurant or a large restaurant as the best experience? That's a great question. And I personally would recommend both. Because what happens is in a large volume restaurant, again, that sense of urgency, that ability to do big numbers in a quality setting gives you a whole different education. The smaller restaurants, let's say a nice 40 seat that does two turns, you might do a little more elegant cuisine. The pace may be just a little slower, but the food's going to be at a different level. So having experience in both type of these restaurants is really incredible. And that's the education that we try to teach as well. The Cordon Bleu is within our restaurant settings as well. You may do 40 for lunch and have that intimate flavor. You may work in one of our cafes where it's a little more high volume. And again, both experience make for a great future and a great foundation. So we're going to take our watermelon and we're going to put it inside. Again, these are special bags that seal and they're used. And we're going to put that melon inside. And what we're going to do is season it a bit. The good thing about compressing or vacuum packing is what we can do is we can add some herbs so we can really incorporate some flavor. So we have a little chiffonade basil. We're going to spread that across the melon. 
I also have a little orange zest, you know, just a little touch of orange zest can give it a little spice to that melon, yet a little fruity, citrusy, but also just has a little touch of bitter to coordinate with the flavors of that basil and on the melon. And then we're going to take what's called a simple syrup. Now, a simple syrup, again, you know, all these great restaurant words and things that you would learn when you come to Le Cordon Bleu really is one part sugar, one part water that comes to a boil. And you can throw cinnamon in there, vanilla, some cloves, and you can really flavor and make for an incredible aromatic flavoring profile. And we're going to take and probably just add like a teaspoon or two over the melon. And as you see here, so we have this beautiful melon. It's got the syrup. It's got the basil. And it's got um, a lot of the orange zest, so really some flavor. Ah, question on pertaining to the demo. That's great. It's, uh, would you recommend using a vacuum sealer to quicking up the maintaining process? Absolutely. Technology today has, has come a long way. And when I look at technology and some of the things going on, it's not something you want to do because it's a fad. You want to do it because it has a purpose and an outcome. Um, you know, when we teach and when I go and do special classes at our schools in Le Cordon Bleu, that's most important that we show the students and anybody interested that there's got to be a great outcome to anything you're doing. What the vacuum sealer does, let's say you wanted to marinate chicken breasts for your grilling party, rather than leave them in overnight and maybe get too mushy and, and soak up too much, you put the chicken breasts in there, you put your marinade, in 20 minutes by compressing it and using the vacuum machine, You've infused with flavor. You don't have to leave it in as long. And it, it's really a great thing for consistency, for maintaining flavor. And we're just going to take it. We have a little slight noise here. So we press down on the lock. And we're going to do the fast mode, moist, because the watermelon, of course, has that syrup in there. It's got liquid. And we're going to press the vacuum and seal. And you see here, it's just starting to compress that melon. And as you compress it, the color of the melon grows richer. Those flavors are incorporating inside the melon. So this is really an incredible way to flavor food. And sometimes, to be honest with you, help Mother Nature. As we know, sometimes we buy a product and we taste and go, wow, the other cantaloupe wasn't as sweet as I would have liked to. Well, that's one way you can do it, is get out your food saver, get a little of that simple syrup, use the vacuum pack, and you see here all those flavors incorporating that serves being driven into the melon, and you're just going to have an incredible flavor profile that's really special. So um, I can, the procedures are endless, from pressed avocado, pressed melons, um, different fruits and proteins, really special. So what we're going to do with the melon, we're going to take a, a nice plate, and one of the things we're going to do is, let me just show you the ingredients we're going to match the melon with. Some beautiful thin sliced onions, we have some beautiful Mexican colada cheese, which is um, a little salty, very crumbly, but it's got that little salt, which is great to offset the sweetness of the melon. And then we have uh, some beautiful mache salad that's just really been uh, snipped and hand-picked, so we're going to put a little salad there. And just an incredible salad that's really refreshing. And I'm just going to take some time to show you. One of the things, for example, if you enroll in Le Cordon Bleu, and what I think is essential for any cooking school, and when I went to school and also did my apprenticeship, is knife cuts. Knife cuts, which we call foundation one. And a lot of people look at, oh my god, I'm just going to learn how to chop, chop, dice. But it's very essential because there's a lot of purpose. There's a lot of methodology and that end result that I discussed of why you want something to come out, why you want that consistency. When you look at this bowl of onions, look how beautiful those slivers are. They're consistent. When they marinate, when you eat them, they're going to taste right. If I was to saute these in a pan with a little butter, they're going to cook consistently. And, and that's really what you want to get at. And that's why it's so important. And basically, we're going to hold that onion. We're going to get our fingers in there. And we're going to just let the motion of the knife do the cutting. And that's what's really important. You know, so when you do come to one of our schools, you're going to cut carrots, onions, potatoes to the, you know, endlessly. But the whole idea is for you to get comfortable with that knife, to really make the knife in you one. And when you look at that, once you get that comfort level, you know, you just look up, you can still keep slicing, the consistency is still there, and you just end up with a beautiful product. Uh, another question is, uh, how did I get my start? Well, I've always had a passion for food, and I think a lot of that came because of my family. Um, my grandmother had 16 children. She was from Naples, Italy, so my mom was from Naples. Uh, and with that many kids, you know, you don't go shopping, you need eating out every night, so we cooked. Um, 
they did their own pastas. They had chickens in the backyard. They grew their produce. And really, food was a big part of our life. Every Sunday, you sat at the dinner table, and you contributed and helped. So when my mom was making the cavatelli or gnocchi dough, I sat there and did that with her. And, and over time, I just saw how food brought people together. I just saw the magic of sitting and having a great meal and people talking and it, things coming alive and you're walking away, oh my God, I'm going to fall asleep, I've eaten so much. But that unity of food just really brought everything together. And when you look at what's on in life, when people say, chef, why should I enroll a cordon bleu? Why do I want to go to a culinary school? What other craft and trade, what other profession do you get into where you can make such a difference that affects people's life every day? From anniversaries, from weddings to birthday parties, everything involves around a simple and great thing called food. How much better does it get than that? So we're going to take a plate here, and we got a little square plate. I like, you know, round plates are great, but rectangles, I like different designs that, again, flow with the food. And I do have that melon um, that I compressed earlier, so I'm going to open that up. And if you see here, you know, again, you can see all the juiciness. We've really helped that melon expand more on its flavor. It's almost got this transparency. Um, a lot of times when I've done this dish, people say, oh, my God, that looks like raw tuna. But that's what happens with the compression is the sugars start to come out. Um, it really starts to marinate. And when you do look close at it, it really does. It has that beautiful bright red. It looks like a nice piece of fresh tuna, but it's watermelon. And I got that basil in there. I got the little orange zest. I got that little pepper going. So this is incredible. Now, what I usually do, too, you don't have to. I, I square it off a bit because sometimes the compression will actually take the melon and change the shape. And I like kind of things. I've always believed with food that you eat with your eyes. Um, that's one of the things we teach as well in the school. Um, the Cordon Bleu focuses really on great fundamentals, on building flavor in your food, but also that presentation. The presentation should get people excited about what's to become. And we're going to very simply here, we take some of those onions we talked about, those nice onion slivers, and we put a few of those on the salad. And again, not too much because the onions are, you know, strong. But that's one of the reasons why we slice them very thin. So red onions have a beautiful sweetness. We're going to top it with a little of the cheese. And again, we're not going to season with any salt because the cheese itself has that salty property. So a lot of different cuisines, you know, people don't realize there's a purpose of why things are used. For example, in Greece, they'll actually put a little minced anchovy inside lamb stew. And people are like, oh my God. But when you think about anchovy, very salty, very earthy. So it's almost like adding this complexity to that stew. It gives it that salt effect without adding salt. And I just think it adds another depth to it that's, that's pretty special. So this recipe here was really, um, somebody's asking out in the audience there is where did you learn this recipe? Um, I did not learn this recipe. I developed this recipe. So I'm teaching it, and now you're learning it. And what drove me to learn this recipe actually was I was looking for something special to do on a menu at a resort that I worked on. And, you know, summertime, especially the women at this particular resort, very healthy, conscious, but they wanted something refreshing and different. And when I looked at watermelon, it's just one of my favorite things. My garbage chef would always, i come in in the morning, hey, boss, how you doing? And he'd have some diced watermelon for me. So that morning I just happened to think, man, what a great thing. You know, we just got done doing some... Uh, Backing, packing of other fruits. I said, what if we compress the melon, get a nice refreshing salad out of it? So here we have that. But now what I'm going to do is make a quick dressing for you. Now, dressings or vinaigrettes, you know, people think there's a, uh, again, wow, salad dressing, chef, how do I do that? Uh, basic rule of thumb for a dressing is three parts of fat or oil and one part of acid or vinegar. So we're going to add a little vinegar there. And the reason why we add the vinegar first is because we're going to add a little salt and pepper. And the good thing is when you add a little tip, whenever you season a vinaigrette or that, if you do it in the oil, it's not going to dissolve. It's not going to really um, get that synergy of flavors in there as much. So we want to add it to the vinegar, and we'll see that salt dissolve right away. We'll see those flavors start to come alive quickly. And then we have, let's see, another question. What is the difference between a julienne and a chiffonade? Well, the chiffonade, basically, which we have here, is uh, you take those basil leaves and you would actually roll them up and it's just a cut we call for taking large herbs or leaves and basically you just do that but you've rolling it almost like a uh, tobacco leaf or something that I'll try to I don't have the basil the mosh is a little small but you know what chefs make things work so we're just gonna take that little leaf you just roll it up a little 
And basically that's what's called a chiffonade. So it's just taking that leaf and making these very thin strips, but they're a little inconsistent. They're not exact as a julienne. And of course, because you're using an herb, they definitely don't have that nice structure of julienne and a carrot. So it's really just a different method. And then methodology, when I talked about foundations one, those are the kinds of things you would learn is the difference of cuts, the difference of knife cuts, how they affect, what sizes are they, how do they affect the final product, and then that's really what's important. So we have this, um, vi the vinegar we added. We're also gonna take just a little bit of fresh orange juice, because again, I like vinegar, but I also like citrus. I like the, that acid that citrus brings, that little spark of a lie. And then we're gonna take a little oil, and this is not something you wanna use extra virgin olive oil for. This is something you wanna use maybe olive oil blend, or a nice salad oil, because extra virgin olive oil is gonna be very heavy, it's gonna be a little too much, and it's gonna mask a lot of the salad. So we're just gonna whisk that in there. And again, this isn't what we call an emulsified dressing. Um, when you look at dressings, there's all kinds of classifications. This is just a quick vinaigrette. So we're gonna just whisk that a little. And we have a beautiful vinaigrette here. And uh, I'm gonna take some of my beautiful salad leaves. And you know, look at the presentation on this alone. And, you know, when we talk about presentation, because a lot of people say, oh, I'm going to add this, for, you know, I want the food to look good. The thing you want to focus on when developing food, and, and one of the things that we really work hard at Le Cordon Bleu to, to discuss with you is, yeah, being artsy and, and making good looking food is, is cool, okay? There's no doubt about it that when you can make food that looks good and comes alive, but what good is that food if it has no flavor? And that's really the key. So what we focus on is, you know, a lot of people may say, oh, it's old-fashioned, it's, it's classical methodology. But classical foundation is really the basis of what's all modern today. So in my view is, as good as this can look, if we don't have that flavor contrast, if we don't have that sweetness, the saltiness, the spiciness, the alive of the citrus, to make this dish something special when you bite into and eat it, what would be the difference of it looking so good? So we're just going to take some of our vinaigrette. And again, you don't want to go heavy. The idea of a vinaigrette is really to complement and accentuate all the um, other properties you have. And we're just going to put a little around the plate. I mean, look how beautiful that is for a summer dish. It comes alive. You have the basil in there. You have that little spark of the uh, orange juice, the champagne vinegar, the beautiful oil, the red onion. So here we have an incredible, gorgeous summer dish, easy to make. Um, this is something, again, you do all your prep. What well, we use that technical term, it's called mise en place, everything in its place. So it, it's something that you learn when you come to Le Cordon Bleu. We teach you how to have everything in its place, how to get yourself set up for success. And this is just an incredible salad that I personally enjoy, and I think you will as well. Okay, we have another question coming in. Chef, is it true that passing the watermelon back and forth with a friend will increase its juiciness like rolling ice cream? We have a comedian out in the audience. But um, <laughs> passing a watermelon back and forth with a friend, that's funny. Um, there is some methodology to that and some thought process very similar to taking a lemon and lime, for example. Um, they always say before you take a lemon or lime, you roll it with your hand and you go back and forth and you press a little on it and it increases the juiciness. However, with a watermelon, you know, it's got a very uh, thick shell, you know, very good watermelon. It's got that rind that covers it. It's very hard. So if you want to throw it back and forth with your friend for some exercise like a medicine ball, have fun, but you're really not going to get any more juicy and uh, like rolling ice cream. So now we're going to do something incredibly special and different. And we're going to make a summer potato salad. Now, you're probably sitting there saying, wow, chef, OK, we're going to make potato salad. But this is going to be a potato salad like no other. First thing we do is we have some beautiful diced um, Yukon potatoes. And again, when I mentioned that before about knife cuts, when I mentioned before about learning how to dice, these are diced potatoes. And when you dice something and when you cut something with some precision and when you cut something with some consistency, look how beautiful it looks. You know, imagine if those potatoes were taken and just hacked with a knife and just thrown in the bowl. They wouldn't look as pretty. They wouldn't look as user-friendly and to, to make this delicious dish. And then I also have some celery. I have some beautiful shallots. I have some beautiful lardoons of bacon. I have a little bit of mustard. A little touch of ginger. And we have some celery leaf to finish it off. Now, a few things I'm going to discuss with you and talk about um, is celery. Celery, to me, is an underused vegetable. 
It's one of the things we look at for making stocks or broths, a lot of people. But celery really is a great vegetable. And, you know, what it adds is it adds this little crunchiness. It adds this little life. It doesn't have a strong flavor. It's mostly composed of water. But it really can make a difference. I mean, a gorgeous celery salad sliced thin put over a piece of poached fish really can make it come alive. So celery is something you can try to cook with. All you want to do is peel the celery. You definitely just want to take off those um, stalks, you know, the, the outer toughness. And then you just slice it. You can dice it. You put it in tuna salad, you know, any salad you like. But a lot of people just take it and dice it. But it's very important that you peel the outer stalk and get rid of that toughness. Okay, we have another question. Chef, are there possible scholarships for the Cordon Bleu? Uh, um, the response to that really is I'm focusing on the food and giving you some good flavors is we will have admission representatives on hand after my demonstration. They'll be glad to answer any of those questions in regard to the program, to the schools, to our locations. And I'll tell you, you'd be in for some incredible answers because we, our passion for food and culinary arts is, goes through everybody that works for our company. And let's get on to this great potato salad. So I'm going to take um, our potatoes. And again, these are diced Yukon Golds. They've been boiled. And we're going to put those in there. And I'm also going to put those uh, shallots. Again, we just took a little diced shallot, sauteed them in just a little oil. And we have some bacon. We have some beautiful um, lardoons of bacon. And, and again, if you were to come to Le Cordon Blue School, one of the things you would find out that's really, I think, special about us is we're built our brand. And our school was built on 100 years of tradition and culinary excellence. And when you look at 100 years, you may say, oh my god, that's old school. You know, everything today is old school. Cuisine, great food, is never old school. Everything that's going on today, some of the incredible things, even with gastronomy, when we look at molecular cuisine, is all based on those years of tradition. It's all based on good culinary foundations. It's like if you build a great house. If you don't build a good foundation, no matter how cool that house may look or what's built on top of that foundation, it's not lasting long. It's the same with food. This potato salad is not successful at that foundation of cutting the potatoes properly, learning how to cook them, learning how to add all these flavor components. So that 100 years that we have of tradition and culinary excellence really drive our programs and really drive students to get excited about cuisine and about cooking. And to me, that again, that's a special thing. I think food is incredible. So we're going to add our little bit of bacon. We're going to add our celery. And now the first thing you're probably going to think, OK, chef's making potato salad. Here's what we're going to do. But what we're not going to do is add a bunch of mayonnaise today. OK, what we're going to do is make, again, another vinaigrette. And I'm going to take that vinaigrette. And this time, we're going to add a little bit of mustard as our base. So we can get that mustard in there. We're going to take a little lemon juice. We're going to take, again, a little of that vinegar. And I'm not going to add any salt to this or spices because, you know, I have the bacon. I have the saltiness there. I season some of the shallots. Well, what I am going to add is a little bit of ginger. Ginger is going to give it a nice little complexity. It's going to give it a little spice and a little zing that's really going to make it come alive. Um, one of the questions we're getting asked from the audience is, Chef, do you teach at the school? Uh, my role at the school is I'm one of only 62 certified master chefs in the United States. But I'm the corporate executive chef for the school. So uh, if you ever seen that movie Up in the Air, that's me, except I'm a chef and I'm better looking than George Clooney. But uh, and he can't cook nowhere as good as me. So I oversee all 16 of our schools. And what I do is go in and I do do like tomorrow. I'm here actually in our Los Angeles campus in Pasadena. I'm actually going to do a live demonstration for one of our new classes and talk about cuisine and getting started in the industry and do is again share some of my food with them. So I go to the schools. I'm there to answer questions for students. I look at the quality of what's going on in the classrooms. And I do take time when I am at a school to share my passion and love for cuisine and uh, have students come. So I'm not a full-time instructor every day at all 16 campuses. But we do have an incredible bunch of instructors. Our instructors go through what we call a bench test. They really have to pass some muster for, to be an instructor at Le Cordon Bleu. And we all teach off of a curriculum that's all driven that we worked on together. And the, again, that 100 years of excellence, our history, our foundation, and our future is all rolled up to every instructor that we have that you would come in touch with. So I'm going to take that. Somebody stole my whisk. and. Um, I see that whisk coming back, the magic of TV, and there we go. So we're going to take that little mustard, that little bit of ginger. We're going to whisk that in there. 
And then again, I'm going to take oil. So this is a non-mustard based dressing, uh, I mean mayonnaise. Um, we're not even going to make real mayonnaise. And the reason why we're going to do that is because this potato salad is going to get something very special that's going to help finish off the dressing. Something that you can make at home. It might be a little challenging, but it's a lot of fun. So I'm going to take that quick vinaigrette here. We're going to pour it over those potatoes, the celery, the bacon, the shallots. I mean, this is what food's about. Food, you know, you come to culinary school at Le Cordon Bleu. The one thing we're going to teach you is a love for cuisine, a love for something as simple as a potato salad. Because if you can love the simplicity of a potato salad, if you can bring those flavors together and, and say, oh my God, look at what I'm doing, look at what I've done. Um, man, how, what a career you're going to have. The one thing when people ask me, you know, Chef Leonard, you know, what's, you know, what's the most thing you remember about, you know, when you look at your career and you look at everything you've done and your travels. And the first thing I say, you know, I've gotten a chance to meet some incredible people along the way, chefs, colleagues. But I guess when I reflect on my life, every day I've gotten out of bed, I look forward to coming to work and doing what I do. Being a chef has meant more to me than anything. And to have that ability to get up every day and love what you do and come to work. So, you know, going to a culinary school, learning a trade that you take food from the land, from the sea, and make it into something that nourishes people, excites people, gets them going, it doesn't get any better than that, trust me. So here I have this beautiful potato salad. I am going to take a little taste. The other advantage if you come to culinary school here at Le Cordon Bleu, you get to eat well. You get to taste everything you make, and that's a good thing. Okay, we actually are going to add just a touch of salt here. Even though I got that beautiful bacon, it still needs just a little bit. And this contrast in this potato salad, I got that little tang of the vinegar. I got the crunchiness of that celery. Remember I told you about the crunchiness? And now we're going to take and um, I got a ring mold. This is called a, a pastry ring mold. And really, um, you know, it's used to cut biscuits, pie dough, but we're going to use this today plating our potato salad. So I'm going to take this potato salad. And again, this is something you can buy in any gourmet store. You can buy it uh, online. You know, so it's very easy to find if you want to do this. So you don't necessarily have to do the ring mold. You can just do a regular presentation. So we're going to put this potato salad in there. Okay. And we have another question. Uh, what kind of mustard did we use for the potato salad? Again, nice questions. I, I love that. It shows that people are paying attention and actually thinking about. And what they've asked is, did I use spicy, yellow, or Dijon? Um, I did use Dijon mustard. And the reason why I use Dijon mustard is it has a little bit of a bite to it, but it's also got a nice pleasant. It's got a little complexity. Spicy mustard to me is just very hot. It's going to add a little too much heat to what we're doing. The pure yellow mustard, I, I think, is just a little too commercial. It doesn't belong to something as elegant and nice. But Dijon seems to have that balance. It's got the wine. It's got that little spiciness. It's got a nice mellowness to it. So we're going to pack it in our ring mold. It may or may not hold. There we go. Or fall apart on me. There you go. So this just gives it just a little bit of shape, which I like. You know, again, for that presentation, um, if you're serving individuals. And now the real special part of this dish is a fried egg. You're probably looking at me like, what did he say? This is actually a soft boiled egg. Um, we boiled it for exactly five minutes and 10 seconds. You take it, you can still touch it and see that it's soft. And that's the beauty of this dish. So I'm going to throw a few celery leaves before I put the egg on. I'm going to show you the special effect that that egg has. Um, and basically, it's very simple. You just take that boiled egg, you peel it, you dip it in a little egg. Uh, flour first, a little egg, and then the breadcrumbs, and basically just deep fry it. So we look at that. I'm going to give a touch of um, extra virgin olive oil. Remember I told you before about extra virgin olive oil. In this case, we're just going to finish with it. Extra virgin olive oil just has a great flavor, um, and in this case, it goes very well with what we're doing. We're just going to drizzle a little on there. It's going to add that little peppery, that little rich olive flavor, and we're going to take our fried egg, and we're going to top it on the potato salad. Now, the beauty of this is when I get to eat this, or you serve your customer or your mom or dad if you're making this at home, you're going to take that egg, and the one thing they're going to do with their fork and knife is cut into it. And when you cut into this beauty, what happens is the yolk runs. Look at that. 
So all that yolk runs over the potato salad and really starts to become part of your dressing. So as you're eating this and the yolk's spreading, you eat it with your knife and fork, oh my God, you got that crunchiness of the egg, the, that nice crispness. You got a beautiful boiled egg, you got the egg yolk running through, you got the tanginess of that vinaigrette, you got the crispness of that celery. Potato salad does not get better than this. And again, one of the things we show you with Le Cordon Bleu in our teaching is we focus on fundamentals. We really do focus on the foundation of cookery because it's so important because in order to do something like this, in order to make this great dish, you have to understand that. You have to know how to cut those potatoes perfectly, shave that celery, know the process of textures and flavors, and you have such an, a great opportunity to experience something like that. And my last question that I'm going to take is uh, somebody's asking me, you know, the experience of foundations and international cuisines and what do we teach in our curriculum. And that's what we do. You'll come in in Foundations 1. You'll learn basic cookery. And what we do is what I would call our curriculum is the building blocks. So after you learn that Foundations 1, you go into 2. 2 is going to show you some vegetable cookery. It's going to show you how you take all these great knife cuts, everything you learned in 1, and make it work. And then you're going to go to 3 and start doing sauces and cooking. And you're going to use fire and flames. And you're going to start bringing all that together. You're going to get a global perspective of, let's say, rice. You may come to class one day. We're going to do rice from China. We're going to do rice, sushi rice from Japan. We're going to do rice from Spain. You're going to learn how rice affects and touches everything. The education is just unbelievable. The knowledge, the passion, and excitement. And you know, one of the things that I think is so important is you have to be patient. You know, one of the questions I get asked a lot is how long does it take to get where I'm at, for example. Um, I got my master's when I was 36 years old, so I was in the industry for quite a bit of time. And even when I went back to get my master's, I went back to basic cookery. I went back to learning a lot of things that I learned in school in apprenticeship. So it takes quite a few years, but when I get that question where you're at, I'm not at anywhere. You know, I'm still cooking, chefing, loving what I do. And one of the things I've always said is I'm a teacher, but I always remain a student for life. So when you embark on a career in culinary arts, you're going to be a student for life. You're going to learn things that are incredible, and you're going to be on a journey. So um, the last question before I sign off and start to eat my potato salad is how did I become a master chef? Um, really what happened, uh, I took a 10-day exam. It was uh, theoretical and cookery. So every morning we had theoretical because, again, being a good chef, no matter how good a cook you are, you need to run a business. So we did wines and liquor. I had to know where wines came from, what the grapes were. I had to know P&L sheets, uh, how to read a hotel profit and loss sheet. So we did all that in the morning, and then we did the uh, cookery in the afternoon, so a 10-day exam, and fortunately I passed. So I am so glad. I, I hope you enjoyed this. It was great to share the food that I love, some great summertime dishes, and uh, it was my pleasure to share my love of cuisine with you. Thanks, Chef. Hi, I'm Kelly Boyle, Vice President of Admissions. Thank you for joining us today. You had some great questions. I hope you enjoyed today's demonstration. We encourage you to explore your passion for cooking at Le Cordon Bleu. Our admission representatives are waiting to take your call and answer any additional questions. Our campus locations and phone numbers are listed under the chat live window on the screen. Call us now. We look forward to talking to you.